Two students who gained admission to Achimoto School for the new academic year have still not been accepted by the school after they showed up on the first day in dreadlocks. The school said it could not admit the two unless they get rid of the hairstyle. Though the Ghana Education Service had directed the school to rescind its decision, the school is standing its ground. Father of one of the boys, Raswad Menkrabia, has told Joy News Achimoto School is insisting it will not accept the teenagers if they do not cut their dreadlocks. This, he said, was the outcome of a meeting on Monday between himself, the Ghana Education Service, authorities and authorities of the Achimoto School. The National Association of Graduate Teachers also weighed in on Monday and demanded the GES immediately reverse its directive to the school. Nagra President Angel Kabunu told journalists at a news conference the directive from GES amounted to deregulating the school system, a situation he said will result in chaos. The headmistress and the staff of Achimota did not deny the young man admission. They rather spelled out to the young man the rules and regulations of Achimota Senior High School. We cannot begin this day to start making exemptions for individual uh, students based on their beliefs, based on their culture, based on their tradition, and based on many other issues. That will lead to a chaotic school environment. Because of this, Nagra disagrees totally with the position of the management of the Ghana Education Service. And we are calling on the Ghana Education Service to redirect the headmistress and the staff of Achimota Senior High School to ensure that the rules and regulation of Achimota Senior High School, and indeed any other senior school, is abided by, by every student. Let me repeat that, that we are calling on the Director General and the management of Ghana Education Service to redirect the management of Achimota Senior High School to ensure that the school, the students, and indeed everybody abide by the rules and regulation of the school. We are also calling on parents to know that Every school has its own rules and regulation. And they should read the rules and regulations of each school before they allow their children to apply to those schools. Now, people are talking about human rights. Let me inform everybody that human rights is better ensured in an environment of rules and regulations. Mr. Kabunu challenged those who disagreed with the state school to proceed to court. Nagrat welcomes anyone who will want to go to court on this issue and on issue of discipline in our schools. But that when that court issue comes up, Nagrat will attach itself because we are an interested party. That court case will not be limited into the wearing of Rasta. It will be expanded into the establishment of rules and regulation of our schools. If the courts decide that everybody can do whatever he or she likes, you all be our guests as teachers. We will also develop ways and means of ensuring that we have proper chaotic school environment. But until then, we expect that all school rules are to be obeyed. Nagrat solidarizes with the management and teachers of Achimota Senior High School and any other senior high school to ensure that the school rules are obeyed. If any teacher feels intimidated, if any management feels intimidated or is intimidated, the full weight of the union will be brought in support of that management and those teachers in those schools. Thank you very much. Well, it is emerging this evening that GES may have backtracked on its directive to the school. My colleague Maxwell Agwagwa has been speaking with the father of one of the boys who were denied admission last week. He joins me via Zoom. Maxwell, what did he tell you was the outcome of the meeting? 
Well, Israel, we are told that this meeting happened at the offices of the Ghana Education um, Service, and we had, you know, some stakeholders um, in there. We had officials of the Ghana Education Service. We had the authorities of the Achimota School and the parents of one of the teenagers also um, there. Um, we are told that, um, we are told by the father of one of the boys that the headmistress of Achimota School actually um, stood her ground that until the teenagers cut their dreadlocks, they will not be um, allowed in Achimota School. And we are told that, secondly, also that um, the GES actually supported um, that stance by um, Achimota School, which sort of creates the impression that they've backtracked on the earlier directive that was given to Achimota School to admit the students without compelling them to um, cut their dreadlocks. We've been trying to get in touch with the Ghana Education Service for um, some answers on the outcome of this meeting. Um, unfortunately, um, all the people who matter within the Ghana Education Service are not willing to speak to us um, on this particular matter, Israel. All right, so Matthew, do stay on the line for me. Uh, now, lawyer for the Rastafari Council, uh, Ras Tete Wayo, also has details of what transpired at the meeting. He's threatening legal action against Achimoto School. The information we are getting this afternoon is that the parents of the two uh, students, uh, Mr. As Aswad and Krabia and Mr. Uh, Teroy, they were supposed to have a meeting with the GES as well as the Achimota head mistress or administration at the GS office. Mm -hmm. But I think it's Mr. Aswad Aswa and Krabia who was able to attend. He just came out of the meeting some few minutes ago and made me understand as counsel for the case is that the GS first has indicated that the so called directive that the citizens of this country uh, saw in publications some few days ago was just to quell the public uh, outburst and then the media uh, discussion. And so therefore, the GS really, really didn't mean what they said. That's number one. Number two, the Achimota headmistress has gone on record in this meeting sticking to the position that uh, they would want the state to cut off their dreadlocks before they can enter the school. So this is the latest information coming from this meeting. And so Ghana should be aware of how the matter has now unfolded. And at this mm -hmm. meeting, the GS, GS supported the position of the Achimota headmistress. So mm -hmm. as I speak with you now, I can confidently and authoritatively state on your network. It, in fact, Joy FM is the first network to hear the current twist of the matter. That the GS publication we all saw some few days ago, in my word now, I can say was a facade. It was a fluke. It was just to deceive the citizens of this country to believe that the GS is stepping in to restore peace. Uh, only for it to be told today at the meeting that it was just to quell the media outburst, but the GS didn't mean it. And therefore, the Achimota schools position that the kids have been ad admitted, but they must cut off their dreadlocks before they come. That's the only way they can come onto the campus. The GES supports that. So that is the latest in respect of, of that matter. The Rastafari Council is very much surprised at this latest development. My sister, it is really uh, a disservice to this country. It's senior citizens of this country who are managers of our public institutions sometimes can even deceive the entire nation to the, to the extent of uh, getting the entire country to believe one thing and just in a few days turn around and put up a position that indicates that we didn't really mean what we, we, we said uh, before. Okay. It, it, it's, really, it's really a surprise. The Old Students Association of Hachimota School has also waded into the controversy. Its president, Professor Enes Aite, who is, former, who is a former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana earlier, called on the director general of the Ghana Education Service to rescind his directive to Hachimota School. He's also accusing the DG of undermining the authority of the governing board of the school. Maxwell Agbagba is still with me. Maxwell, what does the statement say? Well, um, the president of the Old Achimotans Association um, actually said that he has read all the commentary that has gone on regarding on this particular issue, find it particularly interesting. And he says that um, on a matter like this, the Ghana Education Service should have consulted um, the board of Achimota School. And as it stands right now, the board feels undermined, um, feels that GS has undermined its authority by going ahead um, of the board. And he also goes ahead um, in that statement to urge the Ghana Education Service, the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, to actually rescind 
um, the decision um, that it took, the directive that they gave over the weekend, um, that the two students with deadlock should um, be admitted to Achimota School. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Maxwell. Well, let's bring in private legal practitioner Bobby Bansing for a bit of a legal education on this. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bansing. The argument has been sustained for close to a week now. The Rastafari Council is claiming it as a matter of right. To what extent is this right limited? Well, uh, good evening to you, um, Israel, and good evening to your, to your listeners and viewers. Um, as, as it's common parlance that you're right, um, ends where someone's right begins. We know that indeed the 1992 constitution provides for the fundamental human rights, not only for those that have been outlined in the 1992 constitution, but those that every human being is entitled to, to be able to give um, a cognizance to the dignity of the person as being a human being. One of those is your right to religion. But in as much as every person has a right to religion, we all accept too that the constitution states that you cannot engage in any activity that is contrary to the general public well-being and that is in contrary to uh, any set down rules. For instance, uh, there were some religious practices in this country that have been outlawed, even though people who practice it said that it was in person to their religious beliefs. Um, for, but if, 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 if you look at particularly in relation to the education of of, of, of these kids and, 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 and the fact that they think that being allowed to go to school with their dreadlocks is in furtherance of their religious beliefs. I, I, I must begin by saying that I do not necessarily condone the manner in which this has been handled by the Achimota School Authorities. I believe that beyond the law, they could have handled it in a better way, particularly knowing that the people who are involved are children who are seeking education. Because the way the matter has gone into the media space, whether we like it or not, psychologically, these children would have been affected. So even though I speak in this instance in respect of what the, I believe is the interpretation and application for the law, in no way condone the manner in which the Achimota School has, has gone a, a, about this. I, I would want to start with uh, the particular provision in Article 14 of the 1992 Constitution, which we am referring to the Constitution because it's been said that, well, no matter the law of the school, it shall be subject to the Constitution. Let's look at what the 1992 Constitution states. The 1992 Constitution states that every person shall be entitled to his personal liberty, and no person shall be deprived of his personal liberty, except in the following cases, and in accordance with procedure permitted by law. So there's the caveat that your liberty as a person can be taken away from you, so far as the means of taking away your personal liberty has been provided by law. Now, what are one of the, or what is one of the grounds on which your personal liberty could be taken away from you. If you look at Article 14.1e, it states clearly that for the purpose of the education or welfare of a person who has not attained the age of 18 years. And so, for instance, if you decide to go to a boarding house, when I went to Adisadel College, where by 10 o'clock there's a compulsory siesta, light out, we call it, so whether you want to sleep or you don't want to sleep at 10 o'clock, you cannot be moving around the school campus by 10 o'clock. You must lie on your bed. The moment you leave secondary school and then you go to university, nobody would ask you to sleep at 10 o'clock. And so once you decide to pursue your education in a particular institution, then you must subject your right to education, your personal liberty, to the requirements that that institution has set out for persons to pursue their education within that, within that space. Now you ask yourself whether or not there are laws and procedure that embolden or that gave the Achimota school the right to make the decision that they made. Yeah. And the question is that per the GES own procedures and protocols, every senior high school is permitted to set out its own rules that will govern to make sure that they provide education in the best way that the governing council or the, 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 the board of governors would deem it fit. All right. Mr. Bansing, at this point, would you say that uh, you would expect that the students should get rid of the dreadlocks so that they can be admitted no, or allowed into the school? Get rid, I would not say that they should get um, rid of How the can this be resolved? Yes. You see, they want to go to Achimota. Achimota is saying that we will not allow students who have dreadlocks. 
Is that your school, Accra Academy, have accepted students who had dreadlocks? I've yes. seen on social media another school that has dreadlocks. I heard one of the students affected on one of the media platforms that his siblings are in St. John's or in another school and they are not having problems. So no, it's not GES that is saying that no student should be admitted in any secondary school without dreadlocks. It's saying if you choose to go to a secondary school, you must subject yourself to the rules and qualifications that the school has laid down as long as they are within the general ambit of the 1992 constitution. All right. So as far as you're concerned, they can go to other schools? Yes. If Achimota, in accordance with the rules that the GES permits them to make, said that we will not allow students with dreadlocks to be in the school. And I, I, I think that putting the twist that it is a relig discrimination based on religion is, is, is stretching the argument. All right. Because all right. I went to a school that is called a Ang an Anglican school, but there are people with different religious denominations uh, within the Christian religion that are permitted to hold their services in the school on Sundays at the times that are allowed. So you must go to the Anglican Mass every morning, but when you are done, you can decide to go to your Presbyterian church or your Catholic church or your Pentecostal church. And Muslims must are also allowed to, to, to have their call to prayer. But because it is an Anglican school, there's an Anglican priest. And so every day, I don't know whether it's changed, but when we were there every day morning between 6 and 6.15 or 6.20, you must go for a morning mass. All right. And then you can practice your religion. All right. Thank you very much, uh, lawyer Bobby Bansing, for that insight there. And thank you for making time to speak with us.